guys, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Kintzani. If it is your first time here, and welcome to my channel. What's good? Watch popping. I hope you guys are all doing absolutely amazing and happy Faith Friday. It is Faith Friday today and I am so, so excited. As you guys know, we are going through the beauty shoes. We are going to be going through our next one today and it is going to be absolutely fantastic and I'm so excited. Make sure that you get your books, your Bibles, notebooks, everything ready because we're gonna get right into this so before we get right into this video please don't forget to give this video a big massive thumbs up comment down below subscribe to my channel and let's get right into the video so we're going to be starting the next beer tissue drive right now but before then i'm just going to do a quick recap on the last one so last week we tackled blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth and in this beer tissue we basically unpack the fact that what meekness is and the fact that the world sees it as a weakness but it truly is a strength and the importance of being meek and how you represent yourself to the world is you are like a poster a billboard for jesus so what are you showing to people and one of the values that people should see through you is that you are meek um and that you are humble and you are gentle the same way that jesus um is humble one of the books we're reading currently for rooted readers is um called gentle and lowly and it talks about the heart of jesus you know for sinners and sufferers so basically for all of us and it talks about jesus heart and the scripture where it says that he is gentle and he's lowly at heart right and if he is gentle and lowly at heart then we would also want to aim to be gentle and lowly at heart towards people and just showing grace and mercy and love towards people and meekness towards people so how you live your life is supposed to be in a manner that is worthy of the gospel and one of those qualities is meekness so that is what we tackled last week and this week i'm so excited we are going to be tackling the next beatitude which is found in matthew 5 or 6 and it is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled so in this beatitude, it is essentially those that recognize that God is the ultimate source of real righteousness. So they long for his righteous character to be evident in people's lives on earth. And they shall be satisfied by responding to his invitation to be in relationship with him. So the amplified version of this verse says, Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who actively seek right standing with God for they will be completely satisfied. So hunger and thirst essentially is being needy and desiring earnestly for something of God to famish, to crave and to thirst, right? And righteousness essentially is equity and justification. I will unpack righteousness way more because I think it is important to understand that. And then to be filled is to be fed and to be satisfied. And I think that firstly, I think it's very important to unpack righteousness because I think a lot of times when we see righteousness, we assume it is, oh, I need to be holier, you know, holier than thou, or the way people see me, people must see that I'm righteous. But righteousness is literally that it is come, it de it's derived from the word right. Like you want to be in right standing with God and you will never be in right standing with God by your actions or your good deeds or anything like that. Nothing you ever do will ever get you in right standing with God. The only way that you achieve right standing with God is through Jesus and accepting Jesus and, and being born again and all of that stuff. That is how you do that because what that's what Jesus came to do. Jesus essentially died on the cross to give you right standing with God, to give you that place where you can now come to the Father through him, to fix what the fall essentially broken, what sin broke he came to restore that to give us right standing with god again which is something that we don't have unless you know him through jesus right so i looked up and tried to find a definition on what um righteousness is and i found on god questions it says dictionaries define righteousness as behavior that is morally justifiable or right such behavior is characterized by accepted standards of morality justice virtue and uprightness the Bible standard of human righteousness is God's own perfection in every attribute, every attitude, every behavior, and every word. Thus, God's law as given in the Bible both describe his own character and constitute the plumb line by which he measures human righteousness. Like I said again, we are not made righteous through our deeds nor our actions. We are made righteous through Jesus, through the cleansing of sin by Jesus and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have no ability to achieve righteousness in and of ourselves. Like, there's nothing you can do to earn sanctification. There's nothing you can do to earn justification. There's nothing you can do to receive righteousness. It is only through Jesus that you would be able to receive that. You could go through the ends of the earth and you'll be able to find nothing. Um, 
it reminds me of ecclesiastes you know the scripture where there's a part where it says everything is meaningless and it is like a chasing of the wind like that is essentially what it is like we if we think in our minds that oh if i dress a certain type of way that makes me righteous if i speak a type of way that makes me righteous if i listen to this type of music it makes me righteous oh if i do this deed that makes me righteous this and this and this and this and this and we attach all of these things and we we claim I am righteous because I do all of these things but it's like what about your salvation salvation is first and foremost important and then your works though important is an outpouring of your salvation and your salvation is essentially the justification and you being in right standing with God so you can't outpour um, your works and your deeds and all of that stuff out to people if first and foremost you don't have salvation first you don't want to be a Pharisee you don't want to be religious you don't want to you don't want to be that type of person because at the end of the day that is not what makes you righteous like you could go and be so righteous and people may look at you and be like wow this is what a christian should look like right on our understanding on righteousness but in their heart their hearts are hardened they don't they're not poor in spirit they're not hunger and thirst for righteousness they're just like a pharisee you're religious and and that doesn't give you righteousness because you should hunger and thirst for righteousness and righteousness is not an outward viewing it's an inward thing so inwardly are you righteous or not galatians 2 verse 16 it says yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law but through faith in jesus christ so we also have believed in jesus christ in order to be justified by faith in christ and not by the works of the law because by works of the law no one will be justified something i wanted to unpack real quick i would have to open up i remember i had an assignment about this last year for my biblical studies thing and i'm just gonna read this one part that i had written down in james 2 verse 17 it says so also faith by itself if it does not have works is dead um james 2 verse 24 says you see a person is justified by works and not by faith alone so now we have james saying that so you would think oh my works are important my works are what make me righteous right because that's what you see james as james saying right but paul says in ephesians 2 verse 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is a gift from god romans 3 verse 28 it says for we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law and something that i'm going to read real quick that i wrote in my assignment is many may confuse both letters from a glance it would seem like both are contradicting one another james emphasizes that faith without works is dead whereas paul emphasized that works mean nothing these are not a contradiction both are referring to different things paul is aiming to make it known that our salvation cannot be earned our righteousness cannot be earned justification cannot be earned right and it is by grace through faith that we receive it it is a gift and no forms of work will give it to you james however is teaching the christians that since they really have salvation and that it is secure the works performed should be an outpour of the salvation received righteousness you can't earn righteousness you there's nothing you can do to earn this righteousness right your salvation justification and and your righteousness it is only given through by jesus through faith right by grace through faith that you would receive it right and and understanding that you'd be like okay cool salvation it's not something you can do but it is just you needing to go and accept jesus as your lord and savior and being open to having him in your life right and and repenting and and being saved and being born again right and that is one aspect so once you have your salvation that becomes an outpouring and then that's when you start to do works you can't do works without salvation salvation is very important first and foremost because a lot of people would assume that oh my works and the way i dress and the way that i all of these things that makes me righteous but if you don't have salvation first and foremost those works are meaningless and they mean nothing so essentially that is why it's so important to understand righteousness and the fact that you can't earn it in any capacity and once you have earned it, that righteousness then you can live and walk and show people that you are righteous from inward um, and not necessarily be a pharisee you're not necessarily look at it from a religious perspective i mean religion i think a lot of times is this contradiction of religion versus relationship right religion in itself is something that is important like religion is essentially when you think about the things that make you religious your spiritual disciplines right um and all of those things like prayer um fasting and all of these things like these are all disciplines spiritual disciplines that are necessary for your walk in christ 
but if you overly fixate on those and think that that is what makes you saved and gives you salvation and that is what makes you righteous and that is what makes you justified that's when it gets skewed those are those are an outpouring of your salvation received and you can't do anything to receive it but from jesus so this is essentially what righteousness means and this is something that we should hunger and thirst for to deepen our relationship with god to deepen our knowing of the righteousness of god i think that a lot of times we step into it and we think oh i have salvation and a lot of times honestly we're just content with just being saved we're not content in knowing deeper and in, in actually knowing more and actually like having a hunger and a thirst we are complacent and we are content being complacent being like oh i just you know just barely got into heaven and you're okay with that but it's like what about the rest i mean like i think a lot of times we forget sometimes that we as christians will also be judged not necessarily to be condemned um as to whether you believe in jesus or not but we will be judged on how we lived our lives here on earth right and and whether we we use the grace and mercy and all of that that was given to us to that god has equipped us and how we lived our lives here on earth like so it's more about how did i live my life here on earth did i will i go and see jesus one day and just say hey yeah i just took that grace that you gave me and that mercy and that salvation and righteousness and i just sat with it i didn't hunger and thirst for depth but i was okay with the surface level of just knowing that i just made it into heaven but it's like you want to be rewarded for how you lived your life here on earth and that is something that is so so important but like i'm saying your outpouring is is only made through an understanding of your salvation first and foremost right so now that you understand what salvation is and now that you understand what righteousness is now you're like okay god like now let me go do your will let me go do your work let me go make you known let me go and be a part of this great commission and bring people to know you and let me live my life and when people see me they should see you and and i want to live a life where i'm showing you that hey jesus like you saved me and this is what i'm doing for you you're here on assignment so how are you living your life here on earth one day you'll have to account on how you lived your life here on earth and this was another thing that is very important because i think one of the big questions i could ask is why aren't we hungry and why aren't we thirsty for god why are we so content with yeah i'm okay just here yes i believe in you jesus you're great but ah, i don't i can't account for having more of you hey like this is only so much there's only so much i can give you but i can't really give you my whole life right and this kind of concludes to this is why don't we hunger or thirst for righteousness and why are we content in being complacent and lukewarm why are we content with just being like yeah i believe in you but i'm not really gonna hunger in this why are we okay being on sur in the surface but ne not necessarily going into the deep like why are we okay being here and that is what sanctification is again you don't earn sanctification by anything that you do through jesus but jesus is the only one that can work you walk through you with the journey of sanctification and when you see jesus one day you want to be like man jesus like i grew do you see like from the first moment that i received you as my lord and savior to me standing face to face with you right now like look at that growth and the journey that you've taken me on so will we be able to say that will we be able to look at the path and be like wow i've grown i've changed um i've healed i my relationship with god is better my convictions are much deeper i'm on fire and i'm zealous for you jesus and i am living a life where i want to worship and honor you and make you known and glorify you or will i one day look at jesus and say hey so i'm still the same but I mean, I accepted you as my Lord and Savior, but I'm still the same. I think a lot of times we think that that is okay and it's not. Um, you should, your salvation should open up a hunger and a thirst. You should like be zealous for God. You should be on fire for God. You should want to go into the deep end and not necessarily be content, consistently staying in the shallow end. You should want to get hot. You should want to walk with Jesus in that journey, right? So being lukewarm can be um, knowing the truth, but having lost your conviction to live by it. And um, something that I kind of wanted to talk about about like how we hunger and thirst and how we should hunger and thirst for righteousness right so a story that um is found in matthew 13 is essentially one where i think will help us understand the understanding of being hungry and thirsty for god and how important that is i mean like think of the scripture that i think we all love to say seek first the kingdom of god and all else shall be added to you but it essentially says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all else shall then be given to you and his righteousness so you should be seeking out his righteousness you should be hungry and thirsty for his righteousness and then you will be filled i mean there's so many scriptures where it says you know ask and you shall receive knock on the door and it shall be open for you all of those things i think a lot of times we see that and we think oh it can be just like 
in a prosperity mentality but i want us to think about more from god lake of solomon god asked solomon what do you want and solomon said give me wisdom and he had wisdom he was the most wise person and i think that is so important so things like that and it's scripture where it says if you ask for wisdom and you ask for it it shall be given to you so in the same way if you are seeking righteousness you will be filled up with him because you will be filled up with god if you are seeking and actively seeking him out and you are fervent in wanting to seek him out you are not half-hearted seeking him and being like oh god i seek you but just only to this degree because I want to live my life here on earth and I want to still fulfill all my earthly desires and fleshly desires and all of that stuff. So, you know, God, like I understand that, you know, I should seek you and your righteousness and all of that stuff, but I can't really do that right now. God wants all or nothing. He doesn't want you one place or the other. He wants you either hot or cold. You can't be in the middle. Being in the middle is such a contradiction because it's like you saying, hey, I'm on fire for you, but like you're not. That is deception. You're essentially deceiving yourself. And I think the one of the big things we would want is to don't deceive yourself in thinking that you are on good soil, which is something that I'm going to share in this parable. But don't assume that you are on good soil. Don't assume that you are on fire for God. Don't assume that you're in right standing with God if you haven't taken the steps to actually receiving that gift and walking in that gift you know you can't receive it and then walk a different path it, it requires you to pick up your cross and follow him and follow the narrow path you can't say oh i'm righteous and then go into the wide path you need to pick the righteous path right in this parable found in matthew 13 it says a farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seeds some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but when the sun came up the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root other seeds fell among thorns which grew and choked up the plants still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred and sixty or thirty times what was sown whoever has ears let them hear and then in verse 18 it says listen to what the parable of the sower means when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown into their heart this is the seed sown among the path the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy but since it has no root they last only a short time when trouble or persecution comes because of the word they quickly fall away the seed falling among thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of this life and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it this is someone who produces a crop yielding to 160 or 30 times what was sown and i think this is the one thing that you want to ask yourself i think if everything i feel like every single um, beatitude has been about your heart portion what your heart truly looks like and asking yourself that because what does your soil look like and it's a representation of what does your heart look like um are you is your heart rocky is it on a path is it thorny <laughs> you know um don't assume that you are on good soil there are things that keep you from seeking after god right and you need to ask yourself and you need to be honest about asking yourself what are those things which then would ask you what does your heart posture look like are you poor in spirit to a point where you are fully dependent on god and because you depend on god you would know that you want to fully hunger and thirst for him because nothing else will satisfy you or fulfill you you realize that your dependence is on god and only god meaning that you would hunger and seek after him because he's the bread of life and he's living water like if you are hungry you would go to the bread of life if you are thirsty, you would go to the living water. You would taste and see and know that he is good. I remember, I don't know if I've shared this um, analogy before, but imagine being hungry and thirsty, right? And someone gives you just a slice of bread and a glass of water, right? And that represents Jesus, right? And which is what we're all called to do. We're all meant to plant seeds in people's lives. We're all meant to give people a slice of bread and a glass of water, right? And once you have that, you would realize, oh, this is so filling, it's so good. But obviously you wouldn't be fully, fully filled up, but you would have to be intentional about being like, wait, I want to seek him. I want to be hungry. I want to be filled up. Like, I don't want to hunger at this. He says, in him i'll never hunger nor thirst again so man i should actually be going up to him now imagine jesus has a factory <laughs> where he produces this water and he produces this bread um if you had an active hunger and thirst for god 
you would be front row at that factory every single day being like listen give me a loaf and give me a gallon and every day you would be actively seeking out for that i remember something where it says the bible isn't cake for special occasions but it is daily bread for every day you when you wake up your reliance on god goes from zero so you don't necessarily wake up with oh I'm just gonna use yesterday's you know bread and yesterday's think of the manna think of the story of the manna like they would use up the manna and god would tell them this is the manna that i'm giving you for today don't stack it up and and just hold on to it tomorrow there will be a fresh manna come and get some same thing with re- our relationship with god every single day we shouldn't rely on oh i went to church last week sunday oh my parents faith i'm holding on to my parents prayers my grandparents prayers and all of that stuff i'm holding on to that oh i'm holding on to my partner's faith i'm holding on to my friend's faith i'm holding on to you need to go actively go and fetch it and it should be an a daily thing that you're consistently seeking out that and the righteousness of god you are actively seeking to understand that you're actively wanting to deepen your relationship with god you are actively doing that right you can't stack up and hold on to ah i went and every sunday i go to church i'm good for the rest of the week no what about monday to what about monday to saturday what sustains you then think of jesus jesus prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights personally 21 days for me is a lot and i don't even do a dry fast now literally what i'm saying is you literally need god like you literally cannot you would not be able to function hungry and thirsty consistently just imagine your body your physical body if you've prayed and if you if you fasted before you know <laughs> your body starts to act on top of when it's like listen i'm hungry i want food like it just it desires what it wants now what about your spirit is your spirit dr- is your spirit dusty it's it's not taking anything in it's been empty this whole time why isn't it being filled up why why aren't you why don't you have the conviction to be hungry and thirsty why don't you have the conviction to want to go in the front row and be like listen jesus give me some bread <laughs> and a gallon of water and daily pursuing after that i never want to grow numb to the fact that god is where i find my satisfaction and my fulfillment and that i should consistently be hungry and thirsty for him and for his righteousness i should never be content with just salvation being like oh i have salvation i'm going to heaven and that's okay great no i should be consistently taking that grace and mercy and building that and going deep and walking in sanctification and knowing that when i see jesus one day he's going to be like wow my beloved look how much you've grown look how much your relationship and your dependency on me has deepened and i think it is so important for each of us to do that like don't be content with being lukewarm don't be content with being just oh yeah i guess i have this no you should hunger and thirst like i shouldn't be so content with that it should deeply bother me and like i said in the definition of lu- being lukewarm it is losing your conviction like you know the truth but you don't have the conviction to live by it and how will you be able to have the conviction to live by it if you aren't actually taking the steps to actually know the god that gives you these convictions the god that you're supposed to hunger and thirst for and be in pursuit of um how will you be in pursuit of that if you don't know him so again it's like literally the same thing i could go to that and be like why don't we have the desire to know god why don't we have the desire to want to know him more to know him deeper and to live by that why are we so content being in the shallows um and i think there was a video i did a while back talking about this in my head it feels like i've said this before <laughs> but i think that's the thing we shouldn't be so content um and complacent we should hunger and thirst like daily when i wake up in the morning i should be like man i want to know you i want to be like paul and say god i want to know you yes i want to know you and i want to i want to consistently hunger and thirst for righteousness and i never want to grow numb to the fact that oh yeah i have righteousness and it's okay but every single day i want to have that dependency and i want to i want to run to god and he says that if i do that i will be filled up i don't want to run an empty i never ever want to run an empty because running on empty is literally the most shambles thing and one of the big things that i always get asked is what motivates me to spend time with god what motivates me number one it's a privilege and an honor to spend time with him but i need to be filled up i can't i can't function i can't do his will i can't live out my life i can't be a billboard for jesus if i'm not being filled up with him and that's what motivates me to consistently go into the word and be with him and be in his presence because if i start to run an empty i'm relying on my own strength and not his strength to do his will to do his work and to just 
do whatever he wants me to do and to give him glory and to live a life that is pleasing to him i can't do that if i don't have faith and if i don't have that given to him so then it's like why am I content being empty? Think of a car. If you wanted a car, you would need to go and get petrol. Think of the inflation of petrol. That still doesn't stop people from getting petrol because the car needs to be filled up. At the end of the day, the cost of following Jesus is immense. It keeps getting... It's like as if like you just feel like you've gone to God. Like it's as if like it gets harder and harder and it's like, oh my gosh. Like the cost of following Jesus is not an easy thing, but it's better it's so much better it's so fulfilling but that petrol you need that petrol otherwise you're not going anywhere what would be an account of your life if you just remained in one place think of the parable again the parable of um sure <laughs> i forgot the name of the parable but the one where the master goes and before he leaves the master the master gives each person something right and gives the one like five um the parable of the talents five talents two talents one talent and then the master goes when the master comes back he's gonna ask so what did you do with what i gave you um and then the first one with the five talents said he cultivated it and he found he eventually cultivated so much that he now had 10 talents the other one with two he had four talents the one with one talent but what did he do he buried it and waited for the master and the master said that was foolish instead you should have cultivated that so again with what god has given you the righteousness that he's given you the justification that he's given you the salvation that he's given you what have you done with that what account will you have of your life will jesus be like man you were lukewarm but i had so much i had so much in mind for you but you wasted that you wasted what I had given you. Like, what What have you been doing with it? I don't want to look at Jesus one day and be like, I don't, I don't do what you called me to do. I just, I remain complacent and I remain lukewarm. And I, I was never hot for you. I was never zealous for you. Like, sure, I may have, I have, I may have been saved, but like the rewards that I could have been given. People will be out here. They did so much for you, Jesus, here on earth. And they'll be out here getting mansions in heaven. Me, I'm just going to get them cuckoo. And I must be content with my cuckoo. Like, listen, me, I want a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention but that comes with your rewards and stewarding yourself well and being hungry and thirsty and constantly going to Jesus to be filled up because if you are stagnant you will take account for the fact that you've been stagnant because he's equipped you you may think oh god I don't have what you've given he's given you everything that you need at where you are you have everything that you need and he's equipped you for it so what are you doing with what he's given you so there's one scripture found in revelations 3 verse 15 to 16 and it says it says i know your works you are neither cold nor hot with that you were neither hot or cold so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold i will spit you out my mouth matthew 7 verse 21 not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven so it is literally that to ask yourself can you truly say that you know god and have the desire to want to know him have the desire to to constantly be hungry like and pray for that and be like jesus i want to be hungry and i want to be thirsty like i want to be so desperate for you like i want to know you and i want to pursue you and i want to i don't want to be content i don't want to be okay with being in the shallows but i want to go in the deep there's this one song by um karen hawthorne where um it says that um to, i want to know you i'm just going to read the lyrics for you guys because the lyrics are bomb so the song says i don't want to live in the shallows i was made to search deep if you're not in it then i don't want it i want all of you take all of me i want to know you really know you i want to know you lord I want to long to show you that nothing matters more. Lead me, Lord, and I will follow. Bind my wandering heart to thee. Um, there's no life without you in it. I want all of you. Take all of me. Francis Chan says in his book, Crazy Love, highly, highly recommend this book. There's a part in the book where it says, he says, Jesus didn't say that if you wanted to follow him, you could do it in a lukewarm manner. He said, take up your cross and follow me to follow jesus is to be hot like don't deceive yourself in thinking that you are on good soil and that you are okay where you are don't be content being empty don't be content there's a difference in being empty and you not doing anything to fill yourself up and being poor in spirit those are two different things you want to be poor in spirit because being poor in spirit means that you are empty but willing for god to fill you up but willingly being empty and not being filled up that's a different thing you want to be poor in spirit and not just empty and just laying there you know you want petrol you want the petrol that will fill you up and you know will give you that and you want to seek after the righteousness that is found in jesus those who aren't content with just being saved 
but want a deep connection with Jesus. Those who thirst for righteousness receive the water Jesus offered the woman at the well. To be filled and satisfied means to pang with hunger and thirst with desperation. And God himself will fulfill our intense desire for a right relationship with him. Deeply joyful and spiritually whole are those who actively seek right relationship with God and in doing so discover that him alone can completely save and satisfy their souls. Being hungry and thirsty not after pleasures of this world but righteousness. Because of Jesus we can cling to the promise of everlasting righteousness in heaven and um, while we are called to live life for Christ we also have the forgiveness of sin. And this is essentially what this beatitude teaches, you know, um, you want to be hungry and thirsty for God and you want to know that only He can fill you up and you want to go to Him to be filled up because where else can you go? Ecclesiastes says that everything is meaningless. Like, you can search the ends of the earth and you won't be filled up. There's a scripture where, I'm not sure where, it's, where it says, but it says, um, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but to forfeit your soul? What does it profit you to be filled up with everything but your soul is empty? What does it profit you for your flesh um, to be so satisfied but your soul and your spirit is hungry and you're not doing anything about it? Our spirits are hungry and the only person that can fill us up is God and we must be willing to seek that out. Willingness is so important, God won't force you. God won't force a right relationship with you. God won't force you to be intentional about your relationship with him. He won't force that on you, but he is so gentle that he will knock on the door waiting for you to open up to be like, oh my gosh, God, I'm serious about this now. I wanna be intentional and not to say that you won't have moments where you'll be in a spiritual rut or you won't be intentional about it, your reverence will fall or all of that, but you will have the conviction to wake up again. And I think that's so, so important. That conviction is, the Holy Spirit is ever so faithful to convict you when when you start to slip up or when you start to go in, when you start to drift away or all of that stuff. Like So this is essentially this beatitude. Um, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness um, for they will be filled. I pray that we all have a, a new awe and desire for God, a reverence for God, a fervent desire for God, um, one where we aren't content with just being lukewarm or just being, oh God, I'm just here, but we would be hungry and desperate for Him and that we would do His will with a fire and that we would do so with a willingness and we would just be hungry and thirsty for Him and knowing that he will just leave us dry. He's ever so faithful. Like if you go to him and ask him to fill you up, he will fill you up. And I just pray that we would all be intentional because I think that there is no longer any time to just be content with just being lukewarm. Um, there is no time. We don't have time. Like it would be futile to think that you still have time. And I think that is one of the big things I personally pray for is that God, I don't want to be content in thinking that I still have time. Jesus, I want when I see you face to face that you would be like, yeah, you hungered and you thirst for me. You had a passion. You had a reverence for me. You had you had a pursuit of me. Like you were desperate for me. Like I want Jesus to know that I was desperate for him the same way that he was desperate for me when he died on the cross for me. I, I want to be that desperate for him as well. Um, and that is such a convicting thing to think of. And I feel it in my spirit right now. It's so convicting. But that truly is what it is. I want to be so desperate for him the same way that he was desperate enough to save and redeem me and give me righteousness um, and give me salvation and give me justification so much so that I would then walk and be and know that I'm in right standing with him and be an outpour and do that and do his will and all of that stuff and constantly go to him to be filled up. So this is this week's beatitude and I truly pray that it is one that you would take to heart and I pray that you would be good soil. I pray that this word would not be for this word would not fall on a path it would not fall on rocky ground or on thorny ground or anything like that but it would fall on fertile good soil you want to have good soil and i pray that every time you pray you'd be like god make my heart fertile for you make it good soil so that everything that i take in everything that you would pour into me that it would be filled up i mean think of the parable real quick i think it's a parable i'm not sure but the thing about wine wine skins like you can't pour wine in an old wine skin it's just gonna break and it's gonna fall you want new you want a new wine skin which speaks on you want a heart that is just solid you know and 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 good so that when god fills you up it's not gonna go everywhere so you want to be good swell so don't assume that you aren't good soil and don't deceive yourself in thinking that you're good soil and that you're on right standing with god when you're not 
um, but really go back to God and pray for that conviction and ask yourself and ask God, God, am I in right standing with you? And may I be intentional about being in right standing with you? And just because I may have received salvation, let me not stop there, but let me go deeper. Um, and yeah, this is the end of this beatitude. It was a great one. I really enjoyed and I know that the Holy Spirit's going to do a deep work in my life as well. And that's what I would want as well. So this is the end of the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you guys so, so much for being here. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Don't forget to give this video a big massive thumbs up, comment down below, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with anyone that you know that would be helpful for. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Carry me